The Magic the Gathering and Marvel crossover is going to kick off with a series of secret layers featuring our favorite superheroes. And while we are going to take a look and break down what that means for regular fans like you and I today, I want to, well, I want to complain a little bit. I want to get this out of the way right now. Universes Beyond is working. It's clearly a positive for Magic the Gathering as a whole. More and more often, people are being brought into the fold of our favorite trading card game by their favorite IP. And I think Marvel is a wonderful opportunity to continue down this path. Furthermore, Universes Beyond offers collectability that you don't really get with Magic the Gathering. Now, admittedly, I'm riding high off taking my daughter to Collecticon and her loving the Lorcana and Pokemon cards and things like that, but... That collectability is not something you see with new Magic the Gathering. People aren't racing to PCG to slab these cards and add them to any kind of massive collection or do complete sets or anything like that. Universes Beyond, however, creaks the door open to modern magic collecting, where you collect all your favorite characters from Fallout, Doctor Who, and yes, soon to be Marvel. But it is not all good. These secret layers are going to be a taste of something to kind of affect our community and players like this for a long time, and I'm not a fan of how it was introduced. So I warned you this video was going to be a rant and the intro is already ranty. As you know, I don't script any of my videos here. I just sit down, gather my thoughts, and talk about the card game that I love and a community I've been around for the better part of 20 years. If you're interested in content like this and you like what you see and you enjoy the channel, make sure you hit that sub button because for a small channel like mine, a click of that and the like button do more than you can possibly imagine. If you want to support further, there's a channel membership program that costs five bucks a month. It helps support CardboardFinance.com and helps support me on this journey. So any one of those buttons down there is always super helpful for me. Thanks to anyone who clicked the buttons. But Magic and Marvel is a crossover that is, let's just call it highly anticipated. I believe this has an opportunity to surpass Lord of the Rings as the best-selling Magic the Gathering set of all time. And I believe that this is a massive, wide-open front door to bring other people interested in IPs, fantasy, hobbies, superheroes, comics, into the Magic the Gathering fold. And with this being kicked off with Secret Layer, it brought a lot of thoughts to my mind. First and foremost, I hate that we're kicking it off with Secret Layer. Look, Secret Layer is something that Magic the Gathering fans, Magic nerds like you and I know about. We know to look for it. We're ready for it. But the biggest win of Universes Beyond is the fact that Anyone can stumble into their game store. They can go into the Walmart, the Target, or the, the Kmart. Rest in peace, Kmart. I don't even know if you exist anymore, but I digress. You can go to any of these stores, any of your local game stores, hobby shops, and see, like, oh, I love Lord of the Rings. I've never been a Magic fan, but I'm kind of interested. I love Fallout. I love Doctor Who. I see that on my shelf. That's really interesting. Oh, my buddy told me Fallout or Doctor Who is coming to Magic. I got to check that out. With this coming out in Secret Lair, you almost have to directly know a very involved Magic fan to be alerted to the fact that something you love might be coming out in Magic the Gathering. And I believe that dulls the front door for people to come in. And without the idea of a front door, without the accessibility, the expansion, and the notoriety of Magic the Gathering to these other communities, I think Universes Beyond is... Well, it's not nearly as good. That's a major reason why I'm a believer in the program. It's one of the things I think Magic is doing better than other card games because it is getting new people involved in our game. And heck, if you don't think it's getting new people involved with our game, I, I, I'm more than willing to argue with you in the comment section below because I know personal friends that have gotten involved through Universes Beyond. And I think at this point, whether you like Universes Beyond or or dislike it, that is an indisputable fact. More people know of magic because of the program. Now, outside of the idea that oh, this is really only advertised and going to be known at least right away by direct magic fans, and yes, I know there's the New York uh, Comic Con releases, there's promos available, so there will be other ways to get some product, to get some things in your hand. I find myself fighting against the thing that I hate the most about Secret Lair when it comes to Magic and Marvel. Now, I am also a believer in the Secret Lair program. I liked special 
artist renditions of cards, cool things that you can add collectability to Modern Magic without decreasing availability, right? These cards that you're buying, the, the 14th Soul Ring, or Soul Ring or Arcane Signet or whatever it is on Secret Lair with the various art is not needed for you to play Magic the Gathering with your friends. You can get an Arcane Signet or a Soul Ring for 10 cents from your local game store, sit down and play. That is not an accessibility block. It is an you, you want a cooler version block, which does not stop you from playing the game. But functionally unique cards in Secret Layers it irritates me. It bothers me. Tr the trading card game ecosystem is, it's not perfect, but it is what it is, and we've managed to find our way around it for the better part of 30 years now, myself 20, as far as Magic the Gathering is concerned. And if you have functionally unique cards saying, hey, you want to play this way? You want this effect? You want this power level? Well, then you have to buy this secret layer. Is such a miss. I don't understand it, and I'm well aware that these cards are going to be printed in regular released product that you can buy from the game store at any given time one day. I understand that the likelihood of them coming to a box that is on the shelves is almost 100%. See The Walking Dead secret layer, the first instance of, you know, I guess me freaking out about this. But I digress. I hate the lack of availability for these new mechanics. This is a massive failure in my opinion, I don't like the fact that you can't just go to your store, crack these packs, find these boxes, and if you're not plugged in and in the know and get to the secret layer in time, which I'm sure that this one will be fine. Every time we freak out about the timing of a secret layer, there's plenty available and everything will be fine, so this one will probably be the same, but I digress again. I took the second digression now in 20 seconds. This is wrong. You should not have functionally unique cards in a secret layer product, a product that is meant to not gatekeep accessibility, but rather to boost collectability and artist renditions and treatments and styles and things like that. And yeah, reprints. I've got a couple secret layer reprints or misprints that have come out that aren't misprints, but they just misnamed the card. They called Circular Logic of Sorcery. Coma says only during your upkeep. Fun things like that. Maybe I'll show that off when I finally get back to live streaming. But this is a massive issue. This is not what Magic the Gathering is all about. And in my opinion, having this, even if it's just going to be an early release, because, you know, they will make them eventually, I think that is a fail. I do not love how that works, and I wish it were different. And furthermore, this exacerbates the problem that Magic the Gathering had at the end of 2020, or all through 2022, up to, you know, the beginning of 2023, where the game store is the one that suffers here. I bet you if you went down to your local game store, or if you went down to MinMax Games in my local game store, and you asked, hey, what were some big Magic the Gathering sets for you? What Magic the Gathering sets, you know, made your community happy and helped you keep your doors open and pay your employees and put food on your table? They'd be like, well, Lord of the Rings, 100%. I bet they'd mention Fallout. I bet that Doctor Who would be in there amongst other, yes, popular non-universes beyond sets. But taking something that has this massive reach and this excitement, this ability to bring us together and taking it out of the local game store is just... It's something that I don't understand. I just don't understand it. I think it is a bad move. And yeah, I understand that there's positives for all of this. I understand Wizards of the Coast is going to make the direct money. I understand you're probably overreacting. It's just a small set. Regardless, it's the first release. It's the first taste. It is the initial opportunity to see what Magic and Marvel is going to look like. And to have it be on these terms, in these grounds, is is not the way I would have done it. It's something I am massively not a fan of, and I will push back that I do not believe this is the right way to introduce this crossover. Now, that does not mean I don't think these cards, these sets, these layers are going to do extremely well. I do believe these products are going to be extremely valuable. If it's something you are looking to pick up, if you are indeed in in, interested in any kind of collection or putting together sets or anything like that, this, in my opinion, is a wonderful opportunity to kick that off. And I do believe within our Magic community, it will kick off a lot of people saying, well, I collected all the layers, now I gotta collect the next Marvel thing that comes out, and the next Marvel thing that comes out. And that is a positive. We need our game to be collectible, we need people to care about the things that they buy and put on their shelves, and we need people to want to, you know, put these cards in decks and play them down on the table with their friends. For all of these reasons, I think it's going to be a wildly successful product. I just wish, and I will be very clear here because I know someone's going to complain in the comment section that doesn't watch the whole video, and hey, if you watch the whole video, 
Good on you. I appreciate you. I do believe this is going to be a successful, positive thing for the Magic community. I believe for all the reasons I outlined over the last 10 minutes, it could have and should have been done better. So that's a ranty video for you guys today. Uh, that's my thoughts. I'm normally extremely positive about all things Magic the Gathering. This one got a little negative. Let me know if you like this format of video, if you like these unfiltered thoughts headed your way, all the buttons that we talked about down below. And until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh. Thank you for so much for watching and we'll see you around. Oh yeah, click one of the videos that YouTube tells you to click here because I don't know, it's a computer and it probably knows what you like. All right, bye. Come on.